Welcome to New Believers Bible Study. This is part four. Thank you for staying on this journey with us. And uh, the title of this Bible study is Water Baptism. And folks, Water baptism simply means that you are identifying with the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ by being immersed, submerged, and then emerging from the water. Praise God. It's a symbolic act. It doesn't save you. <laughs> Praise God. We're only saved through receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's by faith, not works. So water baptism is very important. When you are saved, um, you need to then follow up with um, having the leaders in the church pray for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a free gift. And then we have water baptism. We have so many uh, different ordinances in the body of Christ. Water baptism is one of them. It's a symbolic act. It doesn't save you. Again, it comes from the term baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo, which means to immerse. Praise God. The process of water baptism consists of immersion, submersion, and then emergence. So that simply means you're immersed in the water, placed in the water, then you're submerged into the water, and then you emerge. So again, it symbolizes the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're simply identifying with his life, burial, and resurrection through this symbolic act. The process of baptism describes John's baptism, Christian baptism, and, and again, this just described the process of immersing an object into a substance, then bringing it out again. First Corinthians um, 15 verses 21 through 22 and verse 45 describes Jesus as the last Adam. So he pretty much took the place of Adam who failed and he identifies with us. He made that sacrifice for us. So as we are uh, taking the symbolic act of water baptism, we are remembering his act of sacrifice. Water baptism is also an outward symbol of us being born again and identifying with Jesus Christ, that outward act symbolizing just the inward grace that Christ has given us through salvation. Galatians 2.20 and Romans 6.4 tells us that the believer has been crucified with Christ, buried with him, and raised with him to walk in newness of life. Isn't that amazing? And I tell you folks, when you are water baptized in a Holy Ghost filled denomination, and you should try to find a local church, again, that's Holy Ghost filled, Pentecostal, non-denominational, uh, that type of church. Um, when you go down in that water and come up, it's amazing. You literally feel like a new person. And sometimes you'll even begin to speak in tongues, get the baptism of the Holy Spirit after that immersion. It's happened. I've seen it. Praise God. It's a glorious and wonderful um, experience. And you should receive Jesus Christ first before you are water baptized. You should be saved, born again. This is just one of the next steps in the process. It's an, and it's a glorious experience. Acts 2 verse 38 reads, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we see here that uh, this is a critical scripture. Number one, it shows two things. Number one, like the New Testament church, our denomination baptizes in the name of Jesus. And um, again, it also, the scripture testifies to the point I just made that sometimes when you get baptized in water, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, even coming up out of the water. It's an amazing experience that everyone uh, sh should do. Praise God. 
some denominations do baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit under Matthew 28, 19, which says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So folks, sometimes there is a lot of confusion confusion around whether we should baptize in the name of Jesus or the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm going to say what my first pastor, who was filled with the truth, uh, said to us. Let's not argue about that. Jesus told them to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This was before he um, was transcended into heaven. Um, when the apostles baptized John the Baptist, they baptized in the name of Jesus. So we, um, our denomination baptized in the name of Jesus, but let's not <laughs> come against people who baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, because this is something Jesus told them. And, you know, these three are one, so we're not going to dispute that. And if you want to get rebaptized in Jesus name, that's fine. Um, but it's not something, there's so many mysteries in the Bible. And my old pastor told us just don't um, you know, let's not come against each other and uh, down talk other denominations. Let's just understand that this is in the word. So we can't really <laughs> come against people for following the word. Although again, our denomination baptizes in the name of Jesus. And again, folks, sometimes people confuse water baptism with being saved. They're two separate things, as I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast. So we see in Ephesians 1, 7, Hebrews 9, 22, and Revelation 1, 5, that we are saved only through the precious shed blood of Jesus Christ. Water baptism is simply a symbolic act. It doesn't save you, but it is a very sacred um act, symbol, and everyone is required to do it. It just doesn't save you, but you should do it strongly. Uh, just, I strongly urge you to be baptized in water, emerged in water and come up. It's going to strengthen you uh, folks. Once, when you come up out of that water, it's, it strengthens you. You feel like a new person and you know, it's, it's life changing. I would say that it also helps with the areas of sin in your life in terms of just the Holy Ghost power that hits you, especially if you're baptized with the Holy Spirit when you come up out of the water. It's just an amazing experience. And I talked about the power of the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit in our last broadcast. If you haven't seen that, please uh, check it out. Praise God. Baptismal waters represent a burial ground, folks. When you are baptized and immersed in that water, you are testifying to the world, to heaven, to hell, that your old self has passed away and that you're rising in newness of life. Praise God. Romans chapter 6, verses 3, 6, 10 to 12. Our old self has died to sin just as Jesus did when he was made sin for us. That's what those scriptures tell us. That's why we're immersed. This is just a picture of burial. It's such an amazing, amazing thing, folks. Coming up out of the water signifies our being raised to new life in Christ. And to be raised with Jesus means making him Lord in every area in your life your spirit, your soul, your body. So we are comprised of three parts, our spirit, which is what is renewed when we're born again. Our soul is our mind, our thinking. Um, and then we have our physical body, which is this physical flesh, praise God. And the soul is where we usually have emotions and uh, different areas <laughs> that we need to submit. To the spirit of God to be renewed and regenerated once we are saved. As a new believer, being water baptized, coming out of that water, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are saying that you've been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ and you now belong to him. Every day you have to now ask, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? 
what do you want me to be? Not my will, but thy will be done. It's an amazing experience. We've been purchased with a, with a price, folks. We're no longer our own. And every area of our lives should be submitted to Jesus Christ. He's concerned. Even the Bible tells us the very hairs on our head are numbered. So every area of our lives, we need to submit to Jesus Christ. Lord, is this the person you want me to be with? Is this the person you want me to marry? Because God, he's a good father and he's going to bless us with good things. Sometimes we want to choose, we want to do our way, have our will, but it comes a time when we have to say, not my will, <laughs> but your will be done. Oh God, in every area for the job, for the business, where to move, how to go when, um, David came back, hallelujah, at Zig Lag, and um, him and the men, their wives and stuff had been stolen and taken away. He inquired of the Lord whether he should go after the enemy. Every step we make, folks, we need to inquire of the Lord whether this is his will. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come, oh God, in Jesus' name. And the Lord told them to go after them, and they went after their enemies, and they overcame them and got back <laughs> all that had been stolen, plus much more. Dr. Michelle Morrison is not only a revivalist, she is a New York City licensed attorney at law. Dr. Morrison wrote three books in 2012 about the biblical answer for economic and health recovery for any nation in crisis. Although the books were written over a decade ago, they contain the blueprint for today, as the U.S. and the world have been hit with the corona global pandemic, economic recession, civil strife, and many other disasters. In the first book, Thy Kingdom Come, The Fight for America. Dr. Morrison teaches that from the moment the pilgrims set foot in the U.S., Satan launched an onslaught for the very soul of America through pagan enlightenment thinking. She presents compelling evidence in this book that in the court cases at the start of this country, America declared itself a Christian nation. We therefore became the number one world power. But sadly, many have uprooted America's Christian heritage. As a result, God continues to withdraw his protection. Dr. Morrison offers biblical proof that only God can restore any economy. She contends that if America and the world come back to God through fasting, prayer, and restoring Christian values, they will win the fight against these crises. Second and third books are Thy Kingdom Come, The Next Generation, Part 1 and 2. Dr. Morrison offers simple content in the books to teach young people how to pray for their families and nations. These books are also American history books about America's Christian heritage. Part one is for children from kindergarten through fifth grade and contains cartoon figures. Part two is for teenagers and young adults. To purchase any of the three books, visit wkdmi.org and click store. Michelle Morrison. The Global Awakening Apostolic Alliance is an international prayer and fasting movement to bring repentance and revival to the U.S. and nations and to reclaim the seven mountains of influence in our culture for Jesus. Religion, media, arts and entertainment, education, government and business. The church must realize that when we lose our influence, we lose our culture. Bring revival and awakening to our nations, oh God. Today, we have 113 leaders in 27 states and six 
16 countries partnering in prayer. If you would like to join the Fast and Prayer Movement, visit wkdmi.org and click the contact page and like our Facebook page, GAAA Global Awakening Apostolic Alliance. So every step of our way as new believers, we need to start embarking on this process of being in the word, reading the word, even these scriptures I'm giving you, write them down, ask the Lord to reveal to you what they mean, <laughs> because this word is life. It's going to pierce your heart and soul and change you. Um, and you also need to fellowship with other believers, churches. A lot of churches are closed, but if you can find a Holy Ghost church that has believers, you need new friends, friends who are of like mind in the faith, folks, we have to come out from among the old friends, the old things. If they want to go to church with you, it's fine, but don't go to the bars and clubs and different things, uh, smoking, drinking with your old friends, because you're new. You no longer belong to yourself. You belong to Jesus Christ, and it's glorious. Praise God. Praise God. So sometimes this takes time, folks. Don't beat yourself up. Don't live in condemnation, because the Bible tells us that there is therefore no condemnation for them who pursue the spirit <laughs> if you're going after jesus and you messed up just get back up again but understand the wages of sin is death so satan will come in through sin but thank goodness for the mercy of jesus christ because god forgives just ask him daily to forgive you and as you stand the word as you put on your praise as you fellowship with the believers the bible tells us do not forsake the assembling together of the body because it's going to strengthen you. Sometimes new believers um, think or have this mindset, well, I don't need to go to church. The church is just a building. I'm saved in Jesus Christ, which is correct. The church is the body of Christ. However, that building has saints in there, other believers who are going to help you to stay saved. Then, you know, folks, even if people offend you in the church, don't leave because of people, because you're there for God. God will guide you, lead you. Praise God. Praise God. Don't be uh, dissuaded by men because men are men. There's none perfect. They can mess up. You're there to learn the word. You're there. If you, you get friends who betray you and, uh, you know, just persecute you, God will change those friends, you know, but you want to stay in the word. Praise God. Let's look at Romans 6 verses 11 through 13. And this is a very important scripture. It reads, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, or Lord, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. My goodness. So this scripture is telling us that we have died uh, to sin. And yes, folks, you need to get to church where leaders can pray for you. And sometimes there's a spirit that they need to cast out. <laughs> Fornication is a spirit. Lust is a spirit. But other times you could be in the word and ask Jesus Christ and he will remove those things from your life. If ye, you yield your life unto God, stay in the word, pray. God can deliver you from those sins, especially in this time of Corona where churches may be closed. You have to find a way, hallelujah, to pray and stand the word and ask God to deliver you because he can and he will. So you have to yield. That means as you take two steps forward, God is going to meet you. Sometimes we just think that God's going to just miraculously just you know, erase all earthly sinful desires that we have. But folks, we have to understand that it's a process and he doesn't force us. He will help us, but he doesn't force us. That's why he gives us a free will. So the enemy comes to tempt, you know, but the Lord said he's not going to give you more than you can bear. So he's going to make a way out with that temptation.
So again, it's up to you to yield and to take that step to pray, uh, to, to get to church if you can, to pray with other believers. And if you need prayer and you don't have a home church, you can contact our ministry. You can contact us on our public Facebook page, WKDMI. Inbox me and one of our prayer counselors will be in touch with you. Um, or you can go to our website, wkdmi.org, and just click on prayer and we will be in touch. We take your salvation your living of, uh, for Christ very seriously. Praise Jesus. So water baptism in summary is um, an identification with the life, death, and burial of Jesus Christ. And as you participate in the symbolic act, you will arise in newness of life. You are saying to the world that you're committing your life unto Jesus Christ, that you're yielding and sacrificing your life to become a new creation. It's a glorious and wonderful thing. Folks, praise God. That old man has to die in order for us to experience newness of life. And Jesus Christ wants to give you this newness of life. It's basically a burial ground where we're burying that old man and arising in glorious resurrection power to become all God has for us. And again, sometimes you will get the baptism of the Holy Spirit when you immerse out of that water. I've heard many testimonies. Mine was separate. My testimony is that I got saved, which is was just receiving and believing Jesus Christ is Lord and rose from the dead and by faith believing in him. And then I was prayed for by some folks in the church. They laid hands on me and um, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It took several sessions. The first time I was just stuttering, tup, 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 but I felt that presence of God. And the second or third time those tongues came out, which are evidence of hallelujah, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they came flowing out, praise God. So you want to make sure you hallelujah, participate in all of these um, these things that the Bible, these gifts, baptism of the Holy Spirit is a free gift. Water baptism is a symbol and act. And then after that, I was baptized, immersed in water. And when I came up, I felt it's a Holy Ghost experience, folks. When you are baptized in a Holy Ghost filled church, you want to make sure that you participate in this wonderful ordinance. Praise God. So if you feel you have not, <laughs> hallelujah, buried that old self and arisen in new life, you need to be baptized in water. Praise God. Find a local denomination. Um, connect with a Holy Ghost filled church. Pentecostal denomination is good. So is non-denominational, charismatic. They all are. You need to call in your area and find out. Don't just go to any church. Find out you want a church that is walking in full truth, not just part truth, but full truth of the word. Praise God. Jesus loves you. He has a wonderful plan and purpose for your life. Folks, thank you for tuning in. This is part four in our five-part series, New Believers Bible Study. Our next uh, part five will be next week. Praise God, where we're going to talk about trials. <laughs> Praise God. God bless you. Love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the body of Christ. And again, if you need prayer or to be encouraged in the word, please contact us. WKDMI, that's our Facebook page, or on our website, WKDMI.org. Praise God and click prayer. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Revivalist Michelle Morrison has seen powerful revival moves of God, both in the U.S. and internationally. Thousands have been healed, saved, and delivered. Jesus opened the eyes of this blind man in an Indian revival crusade as Apostle Michelle prayed. You're seeing uh, uh, your finger. Shadow. Okay, when your Jesus... Shadow. You're seeing uh, your hand. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 
This man, born dumb, spoke for the first time as Jesus touched him while Apostle prayed. Hallelujah! 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 He can hear you! He can speak! He can hear! He can speak! Hallelujah! This boy, born dumb, spoke for the first time when Jesus used Apostle to pray. What's up? This lady was healed from a brain tumor in Lower Manhattan as God used Apostle and Revivalist Michelle Morrison. Let her go by the blood and power of the Almighty Living God, by the blood. That's it. When she's being healed, that's the Holy Spirit all over her. She's not going to need this king. You can type into the Google search engine, Apostle Michelle Morrison, to see these incredible healing videos or visit WKDMI.org and click Revival Videos. Dr. Michelle Morrison has fulfilled the commission to missions noted in Matthew 25, verse 35. In the U.S., she has led several evangelical outreach endeavors in the prisons, hospitals, and shelters of New York City since 2005. Since 2009, Yes You Can Community and Economic Development Corporation, our Christian social enterprise, has helped many low-income communities by hosting economic development seminars, providing resources to low-income people, battered women, and previously incarcerated individuals. In addition, Yes You Can has fed and clothed thousands of low-income individuals in the United States. Since 2014, we extended these efforts internationally by feeding and clothing widows and orphans overseas, assisting with the education for poverty-stricken children overseas, and helped hundreds of churches in their efforts to spread the gospel. Matthew 25, verses 35 to 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. If you are interested in making a financial contribution toward the vision of Yes You Can or World Kingdom Dominion Ministries, please visit WKDMI.org and click on the donate link on the donate page. You can also send donations to P.O. Box 981, New York, New York, 10008 and make checks out to Y 